break the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness saw through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sins and tear my chains. The cross has spoken.
Good morning and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Can you believe that it's still February? Hopefully I haven't spoiled it by putting it that way. What mm -hmm. wonderful weather today. It's a beautiful day because we also get to receive as a new brother in Christ, Xander Gregory Kern. And so welcome to all of his family and friends and we're glad that you are here today. Please take just a moment now during church. You'll find uh, the welcome pad. It's sometimes brown and sometimes black. It'll probably be in the hymnal rack in front of you there. And if you have a prayer concern, you can write that person's name on the back of that slip. And um, it's an easy way for you to update your contact information with the church too. We'll be collecting those during our next song. At this time, please stand now for the brief order of confession and forgiveness found inside the front cover of your red hymnal. Let us face the cross at the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in singing our next praise song.
congregation to please be seated, and we invite the Kern family to come forward at this time. And we'll have you guys kind of move this way over a little bit. Move that way, please. Thank you very much. Have you guys all gather over there? Very good. The service for holy baptism is found printed in your bulletin. Dear friends, in holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, but in the water of baptism, we are reborn as children of God and are made inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. And as we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. And so, Brittany and Simon, at this time, I invite you to please present your son by name for baptism. Please present Xander to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. In Christian love, you have presented Xander for holy baptism, and you should therefore faithfully bring him to the services of God's house and teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As he grows in years, you should place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith that living in the covenant of his baptism, Xander may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. And so I ask you as his parents and family, his sponsors, if you promise to fulfill these obligations, please say, we do. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourished and sustained us and all living things. By the water of the flood you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you have chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, you, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage of sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and, and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that those who are here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by the water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and glory and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church and the faith in which we baptize. Do you, re you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so, Simon, you may bring your son to the baptismal font and placing his head and shoulders over the water. Xander Gregory Kern, I baptize you in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour out now your Holy Spirit upon Xander, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of joy, the spirit of knowledge, the fear of the Lord, the spirit of counsel and might in your presence. Amen. Xander Gregory, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. In the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord Jesus says that we are to let our light so shine before all people that they would see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor there. Would you please light Xander's candle from the Christ candle? For indeed, as Christ is the light of the world, so too we are now called to bear that light as our own selves. And so, on behalf of Xander, we light this candle for Xander from the Christ candle. That Alexander, that Xander Gregory is now baptized into Jesus' name, and that Xander too is the light of the world. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Xander's parents and all his family. Let Brittany and Simon ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them, and make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their son, and strengthen them in their own baptisms, so they may share eternally with him the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made Xander a new brother and a member of the priesthood that we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. So let us welcome our new brother. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same heavenly father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. Amen. All right, may I, sir? Okay. All right, here's our new brother in Christ, Xander Gregory Kern. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Let's welcome him, huh? He seems to be captivated by the stained glass windows. He's probably wondering when I'm going to return him to his earthly father. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If you've ever noticed the stained glass windows, I would call your attention to the fact that the lower levels of windows depict the life of Jesus amongst and amidst the people of God. But the upper windows, interestingly, the upper windows remind us of all the great saints of the faith and they lift our eyes heavenward that we might be inspired by their example and that we might know and trust too that in the waters of baptism we have become like these very saints, children of God and sanctified in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our new brother is now counted in their number. Peace be with you and congratulations, dear friend. Okay, there we go. All right, you got him. Oh.
us pray. Oh God, in the transfiguration of your son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring, Jesus, your beloved son, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ in your glory and bring us to enjoy its fullness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. At Mount Sinai, Moses experienced the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. The glory of the Lord settled on the mountain, and on the seventh day, God called out to Moses, on the mountain, God gave Moses the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments. The reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, and Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill, I will tell of the, declare, the, the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling. Kiss his feet, or he will be angry, and you will perish in, this, in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. Amen. At the second reading is from the book of Second Peter chapter 1. At the transfiguration, God's voice was heard declaring Jesus to be the beloved Son. By the activity of the Holy Spirit, God's voice continues to be heard through the word of Scripture, the reading from Second Peter. 
For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Shortly before Jesus enters Jerusalem, where he will be crucified, Jesus is revealed to Peter, James, and John in a mountaintop experience of divine glory called the Transfiguration, the reading from St. Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with the Lord. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While Peter was still speaking, suddenly a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud, a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself, alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite all the kids to come forward this morning. And grown-ups, you may be seated at this time. Good morning, everybody. Oh, good morning, Arabella. I love you, sweetheart. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Okay, okay. I wish I had, I wish I had enough uh, for everybody, um, but, but I don't, okay? So you're going to have to just bear with me here. May I please have three volunteers? Okay, I'm going to choose the littlest kids, okay? You, um, I'm sorry, tell me your name again, honey. Addie. Addie, I apologize, Addie, okay? Would you please turn on this light switch, this, this flashlight, okay? Arabella, would you please turn on this one, okay? Autumn, you've got your hand up. Please turn on that one. All of these have buttons on the back of them, on the, on the back, okay? Okay? Now, some of these um, are not quite as bright, you know. You know what happens? What happens to a flashlight when the batteries get old? 
it doesn't work, and before it stops working altogether, it kind of gets dim, doesn't it, right? So, but if you look up at the altar up here, please. So everybody get to a point where you can see the altar, okay? All right, Addie, come here, please, sweetheart. All right, and you guys with the flashlights, shine the flashlights on the altar there, okay? Now, Jacob, without shining this in anybody's eyes, okay? <laughs> Shine this flashlight at the altar, okay? Don't look at this cruise. Turn your eyes away. Avert your eyes. Okay, shine it right there. Imagine that. Look at how bright that flashlight is, okay? Keep it on there the whole time, okay? You might have to use two hands, all right? Well, today we have a story from the Bible, okay? A true story, of course. We have a story from the Bible about Jesus going up on top of a mountain, and he takes with him three of his friends, James, and John and Peter. And when Jesus is up on top of the mountain, all of a sudden, his clothes become dazzling white. Now, this is pretty bright, but imagine this a million times brighter. Imagine this even brighter than the sun. Jesus shone with all the brightness, with all the light of God's glory. And then these three disciples, Peter, James, and John, they heard God's voice, and God's voice, right, this cloud comes to them, all right, there's a switch there that you can trigger it to, to stay on, okay? Then a cloud comes and surrounds the men, okay? And in this cloud, they hear God say, this is my son, the beloved Jesus, who's shining with all the brightness of God. Listen to him, listen to him, okay? And as soon as God had said, listen to him, all the lights went out. Turn out the lights, okay? Go ahead and just squeeze the trigger again and push the lock the other way. All right, can you turn out your flashlights? Okay. And then the disciples, who were very afraid, they had fallen to the ground and they'd covered up their heads because they were so afraid. And Jesus came over to Peter and James and John. And he wasn't shining anymore like that, but he was still himself. And he took them by the hand, he touched them, and he said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, okay? Yeah, do not be afraid. <laughs> I love you, Chris. Okay. But Jesus is the light of the world, okay? Jesus is the light of the world. And God, he shines Jesus into our hearts so that we might know God's love, okay? And then, just like little Xander, okay, we share in Jesus' light, and God send us out, sends us out to all the world, that we might shine brightly for the world, too. Okay? Would you please fold your hands, okay? And I'm going to say a prayer. Can you please repeat it? And I'm going to invite the congregation to pray along with us today, too. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the light of your son, Jesus. Let his light shine in my heart. Let me have your joy. And let me share your love with everyone I meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Now, don't go back yet. I will need your flashlights. Okay? All right, very good. Today, we get to receive the noisy offering. And so parents, if you would please, grown-ups, go ahead and get out all your pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters. And kids, would you please take one of the uh, cans? If there aren't enough cans there, there's some on the side. And go out and take all of the pennies and nickels and quarters and dimes. Addie, I'm going to have you go to this side over here, please, sweetheart. I had those earmuffs. The noisy offering is in support of the Sioux City Gospel Mission. 
And last year alone, more than $2,500 were donated by the congregation. So thank you. Uh, more than $2,500 were donated to the gospel mission. And it looks like there's even more over there. So thank you. Good, good job, Jacob. All right. The gospel mission, of course, is a soup kitchen, a homeless shelter, uh, a job training site, a clothing pantry, uh, an exchange for durable household goods. Uh, there's so many wonderful things that happen there. Very good, Autumn. How did you carry that? Holy cow. All right, very good. Thank you. And what a real blessing it is. Thank you, everyone. All right, very good. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus, who brings the light of God into our lives and into our hearts. Amen. We have such beautiful stained glass windows. I meant to um, highlight this in the other two sermons, and I completely forgot, so I'm going to make sure I get it spoken right away here at the very beginning. When you look at these stained glass windows, they're in all the colors of the rainbow, of course, and it reminds us that if you can think back to your high school science classes, okay, you'll know, you'll remember how light is actually a number of wavelengths from the one end of the spectrum with red all the way other to the other end of the spectrum with the ultraviolets. And you can remember this with Roy G. Biv. Do you remember Roy G. Biv? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, indigo, violet. Roy G. Biv, blue, indigo, violet. Well, light, light is not only in the form of these wavelengths, right, and we see the colors of the rainbow by these different wavelengths of light, but light is also, is also described as a particle, as a particle, as a stream of photons, okay? And it's this real confusing thing to high school students. We like it to be one thing or the other, right? A particle or a wave, but how can it be both? But it is both. It is both. It's kind of a quandary. It's a bit of a mystery, okay? Well, in the same way, the light of God in Jesus Christ is both truly human, a real person like you and me and every other person ever born on the face of earth amongst all humanity, and on the other hand, God, the Son of God, the light of the world, is true God, truly human and true God also. Because Jesus is both of these, both a real person, a true human being, and really, truly, fully, completely God, and what other adjectives and descriptors you can put over onto that, Jesus is able to do for humanity what humanity was otherwise completely incapable of, namely, being in right relationship with God and entering into the salvation that God wishes to give. Because Jesus is a true human being, he wrestles and struggles with sin. Mind you, he doesn't enter into it, but he faces the same temptations that any other person has ever faced. But because he is also God, he is able to surmount and overcome those perfectly and make us one with God. He is our high priest, as the author of Hebrews writes. Jesus accomplishes both of these things. But what Jesus does in a more personal matter, and this is, where the, um, this, is, this is where the science instruction ends here today, okay? That's enough about particles and wavelengths. But what Jesus does in a more relational way is he shows us who God is. He shows us the very face of God, the very face of God. In the Old Testament and throughout all of Israel's history, uh, if you were to encounter God, it was a frightening and terrifying thing. And this is why Peter and James and John, when they hear the voice of God, and when this cloud envelops and surrounds them, they are, they are struck down with fear. And they fall to the ground. And they can do nothing but tremble and hide. But what does Jesus do? He comes and touches them and he says, do not be afraid. You see, up to this point in time, Whenever a person encounters God in a very real, close way, it was a terrifying experience. And should the person ever gaze upon the very face of God himself, it would usually amount to the person's end. It would be the death of them. Even Moses, when he goes up the mountain, 
and receives the tablets of stone, the Ten Commandments. Even Moses, when he goes up, he says, may I see your face? God says, you may not see my face, but I will put you in a cleft of a rock and I will put my hand over that rock so that as I pass by, you will not see my face lest you die. And as I pass by, I will withdraw my hand and then you can look at me as I walk away. But you may not see my face lest you die. To see the face of God before Christ, outside of Christ, apart from Christ, is a terrifying thing. This flies, mind you, this flies in the face of everything that you would hear around you in the world. What do you hear in, from what the world would say, right? You can see God in the beauty of nature. You can see God in a sunset. You can see God in a rainbow. You can see God in a marvelous mountain vista. These majestic snow-capped peaks. You can see God in all of these beautiful things. And while these things are beautiful, and while they are made by the very hand of God himself, you do not see God in looking at a sunset. You do not see the Lord in looking at a rainbow. You do not behold the Trinity in looking at a beautiful flower or a delicate butterfly. You see the beauty of what God has made. You see that which God calls good, but you don't see God himself. Outside of the person of Jesus Christ, God refuses to be seen. I'll say that again because it is so counterintuitive and so antithetical to what you've heard around you in the world. But outside of the person of Jesus Christ, God refuses to show his face. But in the person of Christ, in all of his glory, even in the glory of God the Father, together with the Spirit, even in all of his glory, we may gaze upon the face of God and not fear, much less suffer the consequence of death. Jesus is the one who shows us the light of God and who brings to us the relationship that we might look face to face and see one another. Never before has this happened. And only in Jesus Christ is it accomplished. Now, how important is this? Well, Thomas, right before Jesus is uh, about to suffer his passion and be crucified, right? Jesus says to Thomas and the other disciples, look, I am going away. And after I am raised up, then I will come back and I will take you to where I am too. That way we can all be together. And Thomas, in frustration, and I suppose in much anxiety, says to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. How can we know where you are going? Jesus says, well, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And so Thomas says, well, show us the Father. Do you remember him saying this? Show us the Father. We'll be satisfied. And what does Jesus say in reply? Thomas. If you have seen me, he declares, you have seen the Father. How can you say, show me the Father? Do you not believe that I am in God and the Father is in me? There's no need to be afraid. Friends, when we look at the face of Jesus Christ, we gaze upon the face of our Heavenly Father. And here's a simple illustration to point this out. June, I'm going to pick on you for a minute here. How many grandchildren do you have? Six. Some of them girls? Half and half. Three girls and three boys. Has the remark ever been made regarding your six grandchildren, perhaps especially the three granddaughters, has the remark ever been made, my, they look like their grandmother? Hmm? <laughs> Just say yes. <laughs> right? But isn't this in fact the case? You look at a child and you say, my goodness, the child looks like its parent. My goodness, the child looks like his grandfather. He's been dead 30 years and yet here he is. 
Because you see, there is a particular family resemblance that bears along through the generations. The daughters resemble their mothers, resemble their grandmothers, their great-grandmothers, and likewise also the sons. So it is that in Jesus Christ, we see the face of God himself, and we know the Father's love, and we approach him boldly, because it is no longer a relationship that is based by fear, or simply by how we might keep the law, but it is based on the love of God in Jesus Christ. In Christ, we look upon the very face of God, and we remember why it is that he has sent the Son to the world. Peace be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and amen. Let's rise and join our hearts in prayer for all of God's people in the world and for all the world over in their hour of need. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for making your presence known to the church here and around the world. Lord, give us the desire and will to support your church here in Lamar's and everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all of your creation. Lord, move us to care for all of those things here that you have created. Lord, thank you for allowing us to see your son Jesus Christ, giving us your son Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection, and that might we might see you in person someday. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for providing for all your people. Lord, grant comfort to all those in need, those who are lonely and sick, especially Jeannie, Dieter, Audrey, Tyler, Ardeth, and Arlene. Lord, comfort Lily, Trish, Moni, Dylan, Vern, Robin, Walker, Cade, and Mel. Lord, provide your mercy on Andrea and Gary, Marlene, Robert, Shirley, Joanne, Marsha, Peg. Lord, bring your spirit on Rory and Merle, Cade, and Mel. Lord, comfort those that are grieving that are friends and family of Mary Mueller who passed away last Sunday. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, give us your power and strength to share the good news of Jesus Christ to our family, friends, and neighbors and co-workers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share in God's peace.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, he broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for their forgiveness of sins, do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come all now is ready. You may be seated.
pray. Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, now join me in singing our last song called Spirit Song.
Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God. 